So I take the okay. lead on this next one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What, what, what are we doing? Somebody take uh, the lead on the next one. What do you want to do illustrators? Which are the ones you want to cover? Let's start with, let's start with Mark this time. Cause I think we've all done it, done, done one first. What do you want? Mark. What do you want me to talk about? Mark or Chase? You want, which, you want to do I'm illustrators? Sure. Uh, how mm-hmm. about, how about, how about moderators? What's we call them regulators in this. You but, call them regu- Oh, we call them regulators. Okay. Yeah. Same thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's why this is good. Cause we're, we're, you know, figuring out what the other ones are thinking. So, all right, well, here we are again, and we're doing the presidential debate profiling tips. And today we're going to start off with what Mark calls moderators, but I call them regulators, and I, I'm sure, I don't know if the other guys have other names for them, but we'll, we'll we'll check it out and see. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so let me tell you about moderators or regulators, whatever you want to call them. For me, coming from uh, the UK, a regulator is something where you kind of work out how much steam you want coming through a pipe or not. Whereas for me, a moderator is somebody who decides how the game is played or how something is done. And so for me, when I'm looking at debates, I'm looking at how people might be using their moderators to show people, you know what, it's me talking right now and nobody else is going to get the chance to talk. Or are they talking at the same time doing moderators which are inviting other people to talk? So actually, they take that trigger and they jump in. I've seen many debates where somebody's trying to hold the talk and yet they're doing moderators that are saying hey jump in anytime you like jump in anytime you like and they get talked over so again when i'm training somebody for debate i want to make sure that they're not accidentally using the moderators of hey it's your go or it's anybody's go right now and they're using subtly some of the moderators that might say don't interrupt me, it's my go right now. But at the same time, you don't want them to be moderating to say, hey, nobody gets a go. For example, you know, nobody in the voting public gets a chance of input into this. You've got to make sure that you're moderating, you know, uh, or regulating to the person you're trying to shut down and you don't regulate the audience who you want to vote for you. So that's what I'll be looking out for is how are they using moderators or regulators to govern the conversation? Because from an audience point of view, hey, if you can't govern the conversation in in this space, how are you going to govern me and all the the Americans out there? It can become an image of can this person take charge of the conversation? If they can't, they shouldn't be taking charge of the country. Chase, give me your view on moderators or regulators or whatever you want to call them. I'll give you one that might fit into the category. It may not. So we have two ways we can move our fingers. We can flex or extend our fingers. I watch hands very closely. If you go and watch the kid who shot up the school in Florida, I won't even mention his name on the air. I hope nobody does. But you watch that interrogation, every time he's asked an uncomfortable question, you can see his hand curl up on the table. If you're in a sales meeting, and the moment you bring something up that somebody doesn't like, you'll see the fingers start to curl up. And I call this digital flexion. Another thing you'll see is digital extension. This is when someone's getting more comfortable. And you'll see the fingers relax a little bit more, whether they're at their side or or sitting on a table or the, or the podium during the debates. You'll see the fingers just relax out just a little bit more. But the, the digital flexion is what I'm going to be looking for in the debates. What makes the, that person's fingers curl in towards their palm? It's not them making a fist. Remember, we, we talked about still images are not body language. Body language is movement. So I'm watching for the just the small movement towards the palm. There is an exception to digital extension, which is when our hand goes all the way out and Uh, This is commonly referred to as a stop gesture. And I'm willing to bet the last time that you tried to talk your friend out of doing something, no matter what they were doing, talking about a driving drunk, talking about doing something they shouldn't, even if your hand was at your side or in your pocket, in a purse, it would, your fingers stretched out to talk that person out of doing it. So our fingers go out to stop somebody from doing it. Even if our hands aren't up, 
even if they're down at our side. So if I see one of those candidates getting asked a tough question and you see those fingers kind of go out and do a stop gesture, that's a big deal. I'll pass it over to Scott. All right. Regulators to me are part of regulators and manipulators. It's one of the things that Ekman, Paul Ekman talks about. In a debate, you'll see someone, as they put their hands up, and there's, as, as they, the other one begins to talk, they'll, they'll say, I'm not finished yet. But they may not say I'm not finished yet, but they'll be saying that, like Mark was pointing out earlier, that with their hands. They'll be throwing their hands up. Some people will throw their chest up a little bit more, their shoulder toward them a little bit more uh, as a, uh, a regulator. So you're trying to... to in other words, I see them as things that speed up or slow down a conversation and sort of help to control it. They regulate the conversation. They regulate the situation going on. They regulate that person's actions as they um, continue to talk or, or whatever, whatever they're doing. So, and especially when someone's arguing, you see those all the time. You'll see one person, and, and even as their, their finger is, is batoning, you'll see them come up with, the other person come up with um, regulators as well. Not like stop doing that, but stop, let me talk those types of things. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, so this is the most nuanced of all body language, in my opinion, because the regulator can be anything. I mean, we want to say the regulator is a hand. Yes, and, and Chase dead on. I can't think of a positive thing anybody does with their hand that way. And in fact, in Greece, that is a very big insult. So it's part of our DNA to understand that's not good. But it is much more subtle. It can be your entire body can be a regulator. If you're a victim and you're the kind of person who's inviting attack and you shrink at attack, they keep coming. If you stand up more boisterously, you're, you're repelling that attack. Worked in corporate America a long time. Among my favorite ever regulators I've ever seen is a young woman returning from maternity leave and a guy saying something she didn't want him to say. And without a thought, her finger went to her lips. And it was just a beautiful thing to see because she's talking to her child. She just came back after not being at work for a while. And I asked her later, and the reason I know for a fact that's what was going, I said, were you trying to shush this guy? And she said, absolutely. So we do it instinctively. But what I want you to think about is you can send run over me. You can send no, don't touch me. There are a lot of ways to send this. And it can be body language. It can be hands. It can be eye movement. It can be breaking eye contact down. And Trump is a master of the regulator. If you want to see the weirdest body language on earth, Go watch him. He's the ringmaster. If his body language can be categorized as circus, he's a ringmaster of this. When he does those goofy faces, that's a regulator for what she's saying and trying to get you to stop. Watch it. It is the most entertaining part of a debate with Trump. 